Thank you so much to Squarespace for being today's sponsor and for helping me build my new website, but more on that later. That's always my plan. I ask you down the I remember pre-adulthood when the number of friends a person had almost determined their self-worth or at the very least it felt like it like the more people you knew and the more you got invited to places and things like that the better off you were and the need for that almost created this desperation this desperation to belong but i guess when you grow older or at least for me you realize that a person's worth has nothing to do with the number of people that they are surrounded with or who they are surrounded with or how many times a week they hang out with their friends it has nothing to do with anyone else at all you know while others might help boost and reassure you your self-worth has everything to do with you and I think realizing that is one of the most liberating things because you stop seeking validation externally which can be really dangerous and start seeking it internally instead. And also I think enjoying being alone is just a byproduct of growing up. But anyway, so I've been on both sides of the friend spectrum. You know, I've had big groups of friends and I've had pretty much no friends. And I sat down the other day and I was like, if I don't include family or extended family, you guys, or any colleagues, I don't have colleagues, I'm a YouTuber, or any romantic person, how many people do I consider my friend friends? You no know, people I would call at any time and open up to you and people who I know genuinely want what's best for me. And there were a few other criteria as well, but you get it. And I landed at two, or maybe three, depending on how I go about determining it, but likely two. And Today, on Latte with Lana, or Brew with Blakely, or whatever we choose to call these little chit-chat sessions where we imagine ourselves sitting on a porch, having tea or a coffee together, I want to talk about some of the reasons why I have fewer friends, I guess? And now this is not to try to encourage anyone to have less friends or to have more friends, like however few or many friends a person chooses to have is none of anyone else's business although i'm here spilling out all of my business it's just whatever floats your boat and this is just what floats mine so first reason i simply like being alone you know although i value my friends very highly and love them dearly i also value me time highly and love it dearly and yes really it is for selfish reasons which in this instance is totally fine Anything that protects your peace without harming anyone else is encouraged. I just like doing what I enjoy and to explore my interests and creativity by myself. Like, I like going to the park and bring a sandwich with me and sit there and watch dogs get to know each other. I like strolling around with my camera. I enjoy cooking for myself and eating by myself and Although I do enjoy doing those things with other people as well, doing it alone allows me to experience things and to think for myself without any input from others. Like if I go to the dog park, perhaps I don't want to hear what someone else thinks about this dog and that one and which one they think is cute and which one they don't think is cute. You know, perhaps I want to build up my own opinion of which dog I think is cute without having someone else comment on it and like yeah that kind of sounds like a silly example but it's not because dogs are not silly but i mean this applies to other things in life as well and this brings me to my next point which is that learning to enjoy my solitude has created more trust in myself in terms of making better decisions for myself I think when we are surrounded with a lot of friends and people in our lives, we are quick to turn to them whenever there is any turbulence in our lives and we allow ourselves, consciously or not, to become influenced by their opinions 
oftentimes before we have even given ourselves a chance to understand what is going on first and it's not always a healthy kind of influence and we will get to that. I think when you learn to sit with a thought or an issue by yourself first, you will learn to make better decisions for yourself because usually, although not always, we know ourselves and what's best for us more than anyone else does. And now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't ask people for advice. I mean, I myself do that quite a lot. But don't run your life based on what someone else thought or said without giving yourself a chance to figure it out first. Like I'm personally trying to cool down the whole, well, what do you think? What do you think? And try to listen to my own inner voice. You know, what do I think? Another reason I think it's important is because not everyone is worth sharing aspects of your life with, whether it's your personal turbulence or if it's your joy. You know, I think some people have this fantasy idea that everyone wants what's best for them and not everyone does. Like I've had friends who just try to pick apart and trash anything that I've ever been excited or happy about. Like I remember telling some people that I was going full time on YouTube and some of the responses that I was met with were just pure negativity and skepticism. You know, there weren't many encouraging constructive conversations at all although there were some but mostly it just went something like oh really okay but what is going to be your real job and if i wasn't someone who trusted myself and trusted my own judgment which again i believe a huge chunk of that has grown from spending time alone I would have been stuck at the sad, sad place that I was back then. And you've probably been in a similar situation where there is this person or multiple people who you don't even want to share news with, like good or bad, because you know that their reaction and response will just be pure disappointment. So just gently and politely kick those people out of your life. Like personally, if a friend tells me that they want to go to the moon, like I will literally start Googling right away, like how to get to the moon and try to help them achieve it. You know, my friends can testament for this. And if you don't have someone in your life who focuses on the possibilities, or even if you do, you better be that person for yourself. And now I talked to one of my closest friends the other day. We have known each other for over 10 years and we talked about why we think that we have stayed friends for this long and not only stayed friends, but how we have kept it so peaceful despite going through so much together. And some of the things were things that I think should be obvious in any kind of relationship, and I think it is for a lot of people. But one thing that we talked about was something that I haven't really thought of before and it was really interesting so we'll get to that but as for the obvious yet not always so obvious reasons we both felt like we have always been able to talk to each other about anything and everything like we've never held in any irritation or thought or worse talked to someone else about it instead aka gossip and on top of that, we have never judged one another, despite being very honest to each other. You know, every conversation that we have had has simply felt very safe. And now to the thing that I hadn't really thought of, but that I thought was very interesting. And that was that as adults, me and her, we don't really have anything to offer each other besides pure friendship. Like obviously when we were younger, there were more so-called benefits in having each other in our lives like having someone to hang out with in school and having someone to help you in class or having someone wing girl you when you had a crush on a cute boy having the first person to get their driver's license to drive you around and so on but now we're self-sufficient you know there isn't really anything to gain that we cannot give to ourselves so we're not holding on for 
any other reason than the mutual love and respect that we have for each other. I don't know, what do you think? And now speaking of friends, I would like to thank our sponsor today, Squarespace. As you all know, I've had my website with Squarespace for almost a year now and I'm very happy with it. So if you are someone who needs a website, whether you are a blogger or an entrepreneur or an artist and you want to get your stuff out there, using Squarespace makes it really easy for you. You just pick one of their beautiful and professional templates and start building a site that is going to suit your needs. And if you do need any help on the way, their customer service really is excellent, which just makes it that much easier. So on my website, which I've kept pretty minimalistic as the theme goes, you can find my book recommendations, our book club, which you should totally join if you haven't already, the camera equipment that I use for my videos, I've connected my social media accounts, and so on. And what's really great is that you also get really close insights to the traffic on the site. Now to try it out for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Lana Blakely to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And that was all for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please share any thoughts that you have on this topic. Do you have a lot of friends? Do you have few friends? Do you want to have more? Do you want to have less? Why? Why not? Let's chat about it in the comments and I will see you there.